So everything we've built together so far has been HTML only. And uh, it's pretty obvious that they are ugly. <laughs> so I want to start talking to you about CSS, which is how we make our HTMLs pretty. But before we can do that, we need to learn about selectors. This is the last thing I'm going to show you in this course, which will push us over the edge and get us to CSS. Every web project you work on will have at least one HTML file. There is no way around it. You will work with HTML if you are working on the web. Those files will grow in size and pretty quickly. You will end up with dozens of elements and you're going to want to keep track of these elements. You're going to want to know who's who and refer to them for different reasons. One of those reasons is to target them for styling, to change the way they look. And what do I mean by target them? Let's say we have a paragraph and we want it to be red. One way to do this is to add a style attribute and say color equals red. Great, I'm still on HTML, no need for CSS. What if you have two paragraphs? Okay, I will add the uh, style attributes to the second one also. Now, what if you had five or 10 or 100? And pretty often you will. Are you gonna add a style attribute to all of them? Okay, you're just gonna copy and paste it a bunch of times. It's, it's painful, but maybe it's not the end of the world. I can maybe even accept that. Now, hold on, we made a mistake. It actually wasn't supposed to be red. The designer meant to say blue. What if you want to change them all to blue? You're going to go through a hundred elements and change a hundred reds to be blue. That's just ridiculous. This is why we have programs and programming languages to do the repetitive work for us. Instead, what if we could define our style in one place? color equals red and have that guy go target all the paragraphs and change their colors for us. Well, we can. And that's why we need identifiers. Our style guy needs to know who the target is for this color using identifiers. One identifier you get for free without having to do anything is the type of tag itself. The fact that we're using semantic HTML is beneficial here. You can say, hey, target all the P tags and change them all to red. Great, now you can remove the style attribute from the HTML. And if for some reason we need to change the color to blue, all you have to do is just change it in one place and you're done. All of them are now blue. But what if the type of element wasn't specific enough to target all the elements that we want to style? What if we just want some paragraphs to be blue and some of them to be red? Well, then we need a way to distinguish between these two kinds of P tags. A P target, or as it's referred to in CSS, a P selector is not specific enough. That's where unique identifiers come in handy. There are two ways to attach unique identifiers to your element, class and ID. Both classes and IDs are attributes you add to your element. Very simple, ID or class equals some name. This could be whatever name you want. They become the identity of your element. So what's the difference between classes and IDs? When should you use which one? A class is like a category or a group. Elements can have multiple classes and multiple elements can have the same class. It's kind of like classes in, in school. You can have multiple classes like math and physics and those classes can have multiple students in them. So you can have two classes, a primary class, which uh, will later target with CSS and say it should be red and a secondary class, uh, blue. Great, very cool. And again, the name of the class is up to you. It can be whatever you want it to be. Just make sure it makes sense. So that's class. ID is unique. An ID can only belong to one element. It can't be shared. And each element can only have one ID. It's like the social security number. It's yours and it's only yours. So if you have an element that needs a super special treatment, you can add an ID to it and target it using that ID and do what it needs to do. Okay, so with that in mind, you know all the HTML basics you need in order to move on to your second programming language. You are ready to start your CSS journey. You did watch all 10 videos, right? If so, nice job. I wanna say thank you for sticking with me. I really hope you enjoyed it, whether this was your first programming language or you've done other stuff before you wanted to learn about HTML. Let's move on to the next course, CSS Basics. It's going to bring everything together. We're going to talk about the Walter White page or your profile page that you created. Hopefully cooking is not one of your skills. With that said, 
we're gonna wrap up HTML basics. I will see you next time. That's it, boys and girls. 